Today's show is all about Adobe Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts and mouse shortcuts to get you editing just a little bit faster. Let's start off with the add edit button. Put that in as one of your hotkeys. That's it, that's the video. Thank you everybody for coming by. Hit that like button and subscribe to never miss a shot from Yeagershots.com. Of course, if you wanna help your boys watch Time Out, please stick around and I will show you exactly what the add edit button does. But first, a little bit more about Adobe Premiere Pro for those who do not know. This app is probably one of my favorite apps on the planet. I say that so slowly knowing that Adobe and their business practices or Adobe and their business practices is a little eh. The subscription service is not beloved by anybody but Adobe and their investors. Still, after all of that, it really is a good editing piece of software when it's updated to take advantage of GPU, which they've done in when codecs for new cameras get added, which can sometimes take a little bit of time. Sounds like I'm nitpicking. No, I do like the software when it works as well as you would hope that software <laughs> would work. There is a PC monitor here because a PC is set up to my right and there's a MacBook right here. This is very confusing having these two open at the same time even though it's the same piece of software. So I might ignore one for the other as this video goes on. However, you will notice the all option keys are definitely different. Most people know that about a keyboard. I don't use an editor's keyboard at all. I just use a basic keyboard that any computer would have on either one of these machines. Editor keyboards are the ones that just had the keys labeled and colored with commands on them. I don't really change that much on my keyboards. Everything's kind of over here on the left side of the keys, here and here, and everything else is mapped to the mouse for me to edit with. So I don't really have anybody else ever use this workstation I don't really have the need for a dedicated keyboard, but they are really cool and I would totally take one of them who wants to send one my way. <laughs> On a PC, to get to editing and making hotkeys, you're just gonna go up to edit and keyboard shortcuts is right there waiting for you. Over on the Mac side, we go up to the Premiere Pro icon. you notice this, with the save as, you can put the name of whatever row of hotkeys that you've created. So whatever you changes you, you make here, you can save them and export the hotkeys into older and newer versions of Premiere Pro. The settings are saved into a documents folder on both PC and Mac. Here's a version number 14, there's a profile, and this win folder has the custom keys on PC. That process is very similar on a Mac going into Documents, Adobe, then Premiere Pro, except the file the saved keys will be in is just gonna be called Mac and not W-I-N, obviously for Windows. Another thing to keep in mind before we go any further is please respect each other's layouts for their hotkey. Hopefully you go for hotkeys that fit the layout that you are most comfortable with and hopefully other editors are doing the exact same thing. There is no right way to do <laughs> hotkeys. Please do whatever is comfortable for you. And a couple of times here, I'm gonna go back and forth between keyboard and mouse to talk about the gestures and buttons I've got linked on here. Video game mice are really good for that. Is it mice? Is it mice when you talk about more than one computer mouse? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I am using the Logitech M720 mouse. Not the most expensive mouse on the market. It's got a gesture button over here on the side that I can hit two keys right here that I have labeled as undo and delete. By holding gesture on the side, I can do different things which we're gonna go through in this list. Let's get into talking about these keys. On my keyboard, on my layout, which of course is what I'm gonna be talking about all this video, I've got the C key as the add edit key. And all that is is you select the clip, hit C, it makes a cut. And since I just did that, I'm just gonna hit the undo on all those cuts I just made from my mouse. That is the value of having a mouse. Instead of having to go up into hit edit and undo, no, 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 just, just put it all in the mouse. So how about the hotkey command to move something to the left or right of the mouse? For example, if I want to move everything over here, do I just select it all and then just drag? Mm -mm. We're gonna undo that right there. All you're gonna do is hit the a key and these arrows will just point to the right to move everything to the right of where your marker is. I'm gonna undo that and likewise if you want to move something over to say the left all you would do is hit shift and a 
and you can move everything right back to the left side of the timeline. We've all got our clips that are imported into our timeline with audio and video, but if we want to unlink them, you could just hit right click and unlink. Um, no, we're not gonna do that. The keyboard shortcut command is control or command L. This is one, you guessed it, we link to this mouse. I literally can just type in command L or control L into the mouse's app and just by holding the side button and gesturing down, it unlinks it. Let me show you that one more time. The clip's linked right here. All we have to do is hold the side of the mouse, just gesture down, no longer is it linked. And I've got the delete button linked to my mouse, so it's gone, just like that. Shortcuts that take two keystrokes or even three, if you can just get those down to one by putting them somewhere else on your board, just putting it right here on whatever your customization on your mouse is gonna be, it's gonna save a whole lot of time. If you work inside the assembly page, and sometimes, depending on the project, it really helps to cut clips down, all you gotta do is just hit the comma button on your board, and it goes right into your timeline. No more having to drag it over. For my X key, it is ripple delete. All I would have to do is select the area right here, hit the X key, and it moves the timeline in, totally deleted it, and moves it in and fills the space in. If you have a blank space right here with nothing in it, hit that X key for ripple delete, and it fills in the gap. So you might be noticing something here. I've got V as in bringing up my pointer tool. C is mapped to give me the cut here for add edit, and X is just used for my ripple delete key. These three in a row are the ones that I seem to keep coming back to more often and often in conjunction with using the mouse. It just makes it all conveniently located in the same place that I don't have to go all over the board to do some of the things that I do most. Of course, for whatever style of editing you do, keep in mind what you use the most is gonna just vary by you and possibly by project to project. Mapping one and two to zoom into the timeline, literally the one and two key up here. Here's what it does. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. No more having to go and hit the Z button and then the mouse to zoom in, which can take a little bit extra time. And no, no, just go ahead, hit that two, hit that one. One to make it larger, two to make it smaller in the timeline. It condenses it horizontally. And as far as vertical in my timeline, I've got those mapped to three and four. Three and four. Three to make the whole timeline smaller four to zoom in just a little bit. And you can, of course, add more keys and more different heights to it. This is great if you got seven, eight, nine or more media tracks of audio, of video, you're definitely gonna want to be able to zoom in and to make the timeline condensed vertically smaller or go much taller vertically. Now there is a little bit of a trick to do that with your timeline. What you will have to do is come in here, get your timeline, on the right side of here with these extensions, these little bars, get it where you kind of would want it to be. I'll just hit this right here because I already got mine in. You're gonna hit this little wrench tool bar for timeline display settings. And you're gonna come all the way down to save as a preset. You will name the preset whatever you want. In this case right here for keyboard shortcuts, I just have mine linked to number four for that size of timeline. And once you get that saved, you will simply come back up into your keyboard shortcuts and go right here. Three or four of my track height adjustment presets are all mapped right here. This next one is not the biggest one on the list by any means, but just by using the gesture button on the side and holding that in, I can go a playhead forward, playhead back. It's just one of those nice little quality of life things. Highlighting in a clip, holding down auto option and then duplicating said the clip. For example, if I wanted to just take this in clip right here, I would just hit the option key, move it over there. Boom, that's a duplicate. Let's try that one more time, shall we? Hit the undo button over here on my mouse. Option on a highlighted clip. I can also move it up to make a duplicate. Perfect for some effects and some BFS or adjustment layer overlays to just go ahead and slide it upwards. And of course, it's also cool to do when doing copies and audio. All kinds of reasons to duplicate a clip without having to go into the whole right click, copy, maybe to duplicate options there. Maybe it's not sometimes. Just our option. That's your duplicate button now. 
The last tip to get you editing just a little bit faster is basically cut off anything that's gonna distract you. Phone alerts from other smart devices, just cut them off. Zero in and focus in on editing. Once you get a good flow and rhythm down for how you like to do things, this can actually be bizarrely kind of comforting to edit videos. Huh, kind of explains why so many folks can pump videos out so quick. That and the shortcuts that you just learned here when using Adobe Premiere Pro. If you like this video, hit that like button. Do me a favor, swing by JaegerShots.com if you like the said tea that I am rocking as well as some other photography and video theme apparel. It's all right there. And subscribe to never miss a shot from JaegerShots.com.